Okay, so my name is Beth McCann. I represent a different part of the city, northeast and central Denver, but I love coming out here and um, I'm on the health committee uh, in the house. These two are on the health committee in the Senate, so I'm somewhat involved in the health issues. And uh, we do have two more seats up here, guys. Just one, actually. Just one. She's coming back. Let's see. Anybody can hear us in. So, just as we get, as I get started, I just think you might be sitting there thinking, well, so, okay, so how does this, what does this mean to me? How does this thing affect me? Um, and so, I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the ways it might affect you. Those of you who are on Medicare, um, it is not going to reduce your benefits or take any of them away in any way. And you will not, you will still be able to choose your own doctor. There's been a lot of misinformation, in my opinion, about what this Health Care Act does. So just to kind of start off with that, that um, you can, you'll be stay on Medicare, you're going to still have your same doctor, you're going to still have your benefits. But it will actually help you as well um, in the sense that you may have heard about this donut hole, which has to do with prescription drugs and the fact that there's some lapse or gap in payments uh, that you get for prescription drugs. So it's going to work on closing that hole. I don't know why it's called the donut hole. Maybe Senator Aguilar knows. But anyway, I've never well, quite... Anyway, you get, because once you spend, they spend a certain amount, they don't cover you for a while. And once you spend that next amount, they start to cover you again. So it creates that gap. So that is a gap. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that it will slowly fill in the gap. And I think by 2020, we won't have a donut hole anymore. There won't be a gap. So... Um, that's one thing that it will do for <clears throat> those of you on Medicare. Um, let's see, it also will allow for more preventive type appointments to be covered without payment. So I think our country is trying to move more toward prevention and wellness and thinking before you get sick, you know, before you get um, uh, chronic disease, are there ways that you can prevent it? So I think there's a real switch, uh, emphasis toward that. And in fact, those of you who are women here in the group, um, I think as of August 1st of us, so a couple days ago, some of the new benefits are going into effect for uh, women, um, which will be uh, helpful in terms of coverage for preventive care for women in particular. So. You can now get go and get a preventive wellness exam, and you, you will not have to pay for that, um, even through even if you have insurance. Um, so those of you who then are on a private health insurance plan um, already through your employer, that's really not going to change. You'll continue to be able to have your same doctors, have your health uh, insurance company continue through your employer. We are on the state system, for example, and under the state system we get a choice of United Healthcare or Kaiser, basically those two. And um, the choices that we've made will continue even as this act goes into effect. So for people who are covered generally through a private company, through their employer, it's essentially going to continue in the same the same way it is with these additional benefits that Senator Aguilar talked about, um, you know, having your children be able to stay on your uh, insurance until they're 26, um, being able to have the preventive coverage, uh, preventive visits covered, not having this inability to get insurance because you have pre existing conditions, which is really one of the best features of this act because. It's sort of never made much sense to me that the people who need the care the most couldn't get insurance because um, they already had a condition. So now people who have diabetes or who have some chronic back issue or things of that sort will be able to get insurance, which is a really a great step forward. So those things will impact you on your private insurance, um, but they'll, they won't, there won't be any interference with you know, I've, I've heard people say, well, I don't want the government getting between me and my doctor. And that's not going to happen with this act. The, actually, the people that get between you and your doctor are the insurance companies. That <laughs> so, <laughs> so 
that's going to continue, unfortunately, to some extent. But again, um, with this wellness idea and not being able to prohibit you from getting insurance because of a pre existing condition, those are all really going to be positive things. Plus, there's no longer going to be a cap on how much you can actually get through your insurance company. Many companies now say, you know, we'll cover you up to a certain amount of money and then you're on your own. They'll no longer be able to do that. And um, again, the 80-85% of the premiums you pay now have to go toward your actual care versus administrative costs. So there's some really good things that will help you in your private um, insurance. And then, as Senator Boyd said, those, are, those people who are uninsured um, or even underinsured will have the option to look at, at the exchange and perhaps get their own individual insurance through the exchange. Or, if you're employed by a small business who, who thus far hasn't been able to get to provide insurance for its employees, we're hoping that through the exchange, the small businesses will be able to afford to provide insurance to their employees because there will be these subsidies available, uh, which we haven't had in the past. So uh, the overall point, I guess, is that what we're trying to do is get more people covered through insurance and make it more affordable. You know, the insurance companies um, are going to have to look at what the exchange, what the essential benefits they have to provide are. And this is something you may hear a lot about in the next several months because in the exchange, the state and the federal government are able to say to the insurance companies, you have to provide coverage for at least these things in your plans. So they're called the essential benefits of the plans. Um, and then the insurance companies will be able to design basic plans, intermediate plans, and then the catalog plans, if you will, um, so that employers, small business employers, and individuals can look and say, you know, what do I want? I, I just really want basic coverage. I'm healthy. I don't think I'm going to need much, so I'll, I'll buy the basic plan. Um, or the, the employer may say, I'm going to provide you a basic plan that you, uh, that you can choose with different companies what they offer. So when other people will um, feel that they need to purchase plans that are more expensive because they cover more. So that's some of the things that this oversight committee and the legislature and the governor's office and the division of insurance are all going to be working on over the next several months is to figure out what are these plans going to look like and how can we make sure they're affordable. The concept is the more people you have insured, the less cost. Because we're going to make those 24, 25, 26-year-old kids who think they'll never need any, um, any any doctor visits or any health needs. We're going to make them purchase insurance. And um, some people don't like that idea, but the concept is that everybody will have lower costs because we're all sharing in the, in the, the cost of insurance, um, which is the way really insurance is supposed to work, that, that we all, uh, you know, share in that. So if you're healthy, you get the benefit of having the insurance um, you have to pay for it, and as you age and perhaps have other uh, issues, health issues come up, you are continue to have that coverage available. So, I know that's sort of a fundamental philosophical issue for some people, is this idea that the government says, okay, you have to purchase insurance. But I believe that that's an appropriate uh, role of government because we are trying to make it available to everyone. And um, part of my philosophy is, as a government, we need to help those less fortunate. So people who have chronic diseases do need more medical care. I don't mind paying for that because I think it makes us as a community healthier. And I, I want to keep us as a community healthier. So that's kind of the philosophical underpinning of this um, whole movement or law. So the scary thing is all this has to be in place pretty fast. So those of us that are working on some of these issues, um, the exchange has to be fully operational by January 1 of 2014, which is only one year and a half. And we really have to get make it operating by October 1 of 2013, which is really just a little over a year. 
so that people can actually start looking and purchasing plans that will go into effect January 1st of 2014. So it's going to be happening pretty quickly. Um, I'm just curious here, how many of you are on private health insurance through an employer? So, okay. or, and Medicare, I guess we include Medicare in there too. So it's most of you. So most of you really aren't going to see huge changes in your daily ability to get medical care. Again, it will be those issues that we talked about, like prevention being available and so forth. Um, let me think if there's anything else. I think I'll stop. Oh, I just, I'm kind of an Olympics freak. So I don't know, have you guys been watching this? Yes. Yes. Oh, I think Play I should give her a round. I watched this woman, and I was like, she's 17 years old. <laughs> and she's going to be a senior at Regis. I think it's fantastic. So um, I've been really excited to, I, I think as a community, it's nice for us to see some positive things. And, um, you know, there's been some great, and of course, Michael Phelps is um, so anyway, I will end with that. Speaking of being healthy, if we can all be like that, we would need health. Um, anyway. That's a lot if we're all 17 again. Yeah. <laughs>